Hello, and welcome to D&D Sessions, a new video series I'm doing instead of using the live recordings of my D&D Sessions. We will be going through my ongoing campaign, The Insaner Things. The Insaner Things airs once a month on my Twitch channel, Sword or Sorcery, link in the description below. So, this first episode of D&D Sessions, The Insaner Things, is going to be shorter because I'm going to cover Session Zero. I usually want to cover a Session Zero because we generally don't do any gameplay on Session Zeros, or at least my Session Zeros, but this time we had extra time, so we played a little bit of a session. First off, let's talk about the rules that I use that aren't the ones that people normally use or are ones that I personally just came up with. So during the session, we talked about these optional rules, of course. The main optional rule I will be using is sanity. Now, I'm not using just the base for every sanity in the book. For my campaigns, sanity always starts at 10, so you don't roll sanity. You just start at 10. Whenever you succeed a sanity save, which is generally set to a DC of 10, your sanity goes up by 1, so your score goes up by 1, not your bonus. And if you fail a sanity save, the reverse happens. Your sanity goes down by 1. At 0 sanity, so when you hit 0, so you went from 1 to 0, you hit 0 sanity, you gain a permanent madness, and your sanity reverts to 10. Okay, simple enough so far, right? At 21 sanity, so you went from 20 to 21 just now. If you have any madnesses, you remove that madness, or remove a madness of your choice, and then your sanity reverts to 10. If you reach 21 sanity, and you don't have any madnesses, you may increase your intelligence score by 1 up to a maximum of 20. If your intelligence is at 20, then you go to wisdom and increase it by 1 up to a maximum of 20. After that, it probably goes Charisma, Constitution, Strength, Dexterity, but I don't expect it to ever get past Charisma. I'll be surprised, actually, if it ever gets past Wisdom. But if somebody rolls really well, it is possible. The reason we don't do Wisdom first is because this is kind of a Lovecraftian mystery, so I don't want passive perceptions increasing, especially for a reason that you'll find out later. We also have comfort items. How comfort items work are during a long rest, if your sanity is lower than 10, it goes up by 1 to a maximum of 10. The other way it can go up is if you take that long rest and you have your comfort item, it goes up by 2 to a maximum of 10. Your sanity cannot go down during a long rest, unless of course you make a sanity save and fail it. The next two optional rules are ones I tend to use a lot not just in my Lovecraftian campaigns. I always use flanking gives you advantage, and I also use something I call initiating combat. If you aren't in stealth, and the enemy is distracted or doesn't notice you, or you and the enemy are engaged in conversation, and you suddenly attack, it's not considered a surprise round. You get that one attack, and then everyone rolls initiative. If you're in stealth, however, you would still get the surprise round. Now, here's what happened on Session Zero. We meet two characters on Session Zero. We were expecting to have four characters. Two players couldn't make it to Session Zero. So we have two characters on Session Zero. The first is Edis, the centaur bard. She is a doe centaur, meaning her centaur is half deer instead of half horse. The second character is Cleways, the variant human cleric. He is very paranoid and is always looking for danger. This is reflected in his passive perception. His passive perception is 21. Ah! Edis and Cleways found themselves traveling towards town at the beginning of the gameplay of Session Zero. It had just gotten dark out, and they were looking for a campsite when they conveniently saw a campfire. They approached the campfire, 
and Cleeways's passive perception noticed three villagers with three gnome squidlings behind them. The villagers were sleeping, so were they were unaware of the gnome squidlings. Edis also noticed the gnome squidlings, and both characters made sanity saves. Side note, characters only make a sanity save once per creature or object. They are not required to make one every time they see gnome squidlings. They only have to do it the one time for gnome squidlings. While the characters were watching, the gnome squidlings used their remove brain attack. Two of these succeeded. This also prompted sanity saves. Whomp. Oh, look, a brain. Whomp. Oh, look, they ate it. After seeing this, they engaged in combat with the squidlings and drove them off. None of the villagers survived. Then, the town guard rounded the corner in the path and demanded to know who took the brains as they noticed the wounds that were all too familiar to them. The two players managed to talk them down and convince them that there's no way that they could have been doing the brain snatching. The brain snatching has been going on for weeks, and they haven't been around that long. That's not the only strange thing that's been happening around town, though. Strange things have been happening for months. That's the reason the characters are coming to town, they tell the guards. The guards escort them to town and show them where the inn is and tell them not to leave town. We're going to have some questions for you in the morning. In the morning, they ask them these questions. Once again, they ask, why are you here? Which, of course, they're here to investigate these strange happenings around town. They also ask them, where are you from? Oh, you know, we're from nearby towns. We're just coming into Fogbrook to investigate, of course. We already told you that multiple times. And after a few more mundane questions, the guards let them go. Not long after being in town, as they investigate the town, because, you know, strange things have been happening, some cultists attempt to ambush our two heroes. Hopefully they'll be heroes. We don't know for sure yet. However, Cleeways notices them immediately. They can't get a higher than a 21 on stealth. Unfortunately, because they didn't roll higher than a 21 on stealth. Cleeways attempts to converse with the cultists, and they exchange a few words. However, these few words end with Edis on the ground, passed out from a poison arrow, and Cleeways running for his life. As he was running towards the guards, he saw Cat Thulu on the way. It waved one of its mini tentacle legs at him, and he made a sanity save. While Cleeways was trying to find where the cultists took Edis, she also saw a Cat Thulu as she was sitting in her cell in the cultist hideout. The Cat Thulu waved at her as well and then moved on. Edis also made a sanity save. Edis realized she was in the cultist hideout. And after a while, decided that, you know, maybe I should cast Charm Person. It doesn't require any components, it's just verbal and somatic. Therefore, the next cultist she saw, she charmed. And the cultist let her out, led her to the things, and out the front door. No one was there to challenge them. This entrance is supposed to be secret. Edis returned to Cleeways and berated him for running away from combat. While Edis was captured, however, Cleeways had found the town herbalist and was trying to get some information out of him. The problem was that the herbalist was sampling his own wares and was able to sneak some of his leaves into the drunk tank. The guards were not amused. Cleeways investigated the guards, feeling that maybe they were part of the cult, and found that at least the ones he interviewed and investigated are trustworthy that being the majority of the guards in town. Fogbrook is a fairly small town. He then went out to look for his traveling companion, and that's when Edith showed back up. They went back to the inn, took a long rest, and decided to investigate in the morning. In the morning, Edith and Cleeways went out into the fog of Fogbrook, its namesake. 
that and the river that ran through town that for some reason is called the brook, even though it's a very wide river. They ran into two figures in the fog. Both of these figures had only one eye each, large, encompassing most of their head. These were two Nothic. They triggered a sanity save from both of our heroes. A fight ensued, and since neither character was really a front line, the battle was a maneuver. I'm going to back up here, cast a spell, they're going to move forward, use their eye beam. We're going to back up here, cast a spell, they're going to move forward, cast their eye beam. Oh, I believe I forgot to mention, characters are starting out at fourth level. Eventually, some town guards showed up and stood their ground against the Nothic. The battle turned into more of a normal melee. The cleric and the bard, away from combat, casting spells into it, and the guards meleeing it out with the Nothic. One of the Nothic died, prompting the other one to enrage and use its full power. And then it rolled really low on its attack damage, and didn't kill a single guard, and died on the next turn. The characters then went back to the inn, took their long rest, ending Session Zero. And that, my friends, was Session Zero of The Insaner Things. Once again, be sure to check it out on my channel on Twitch. It airs one Saturday a month. Link in the description below.